All right, hi everyone. Welcome uh, to the Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society September 2020 virtual field trip to Lake Isaac. Uh, my name is Michelle Brocious and I am your birdwalk leader this evening. Um, just a quick note for, uh, I think everyone here knows what the virtual uh, field trip is about, but for the folks watching the recording, um, every month I select a location in Northeast Ohio for folks to go and visit um, independently. While there, people um, explore the space, look for birds. I always choose a couple of target species. And then when they are done visiting the location, they will then submit to me something to include in the digital scrapbook that I am sharing this evening. And that could be some journaling, photography, bird lists, um, thoughts, anything to do um, with the location. So that is what I'll be sharing with all of you tonight. Uh, I will start out with uh, a little introduction to the location itself and then I will present the target species and then we'll review all the submissions uh, that everyone gave to me. So without further ado, All right, so uh, September's location was Lake Isaac. Um, classified as a glacial pothole created thousands of years ago, Lake Isaac Waterfowl Sanctuary serves an, as an important refuge for migrating waterfowl. The surrounding woodlands provide habitat for red foxes, mink, deer, opossum, and countless other animals. It is one of the most active wildlife corridors in Cuyahoga County. A 1.2 mile hiking trail follows through the corridor passing through wetlands, woodlands, a pine plantation, and an orchard, while providing an overlook of the floodplain of, flood of Baldwin Creek. So that is the description um, that can be found on the Cleveland Metro Parks website and the Big Creek Reservation Lake Isaac page. And then on the left here, a beautiful photo of Lake Isaac taken by Tom Fishburn in the early morning um, of the, the lake and the observation area. So our target species, we focused in September on the fall warblers, at least in the later half of September. Um, a warbler is a small songbird in the family Perulidae, most of which sport bright colors and interesting patterns in the spring. Warblers primarily feed on insects and depend on a warm climate where their main food source can thrive. They therefore migrate to the tropics in the winter and return north in the spring as temperatures begin to rise. And then uh, Jason Ward um, in the article, How to Recognize Six Warblers in Their Fall Colors, has this to say about the fall warblers. In autumn, the air fills with the groans of frustrated birders as they strain their senses to identify fall warblers. During spring migration, warblers announce their presence with their vibrant plumages and songs. But in autumn, that all changes. The bright, colorful feathers are replaced by dull brown as the birds molt into their non-breeding plumage. And because there's no reason to sing for a mate, they're much quieter too. So yes, fall warblers are a little more challenging to identify um, than in the springtime. Um, but we embarked on the challenge anyway um, for this field trip. And then I left there a photo of a Nashville warbler in non-breeding plumage at Lake Isaac by Tom Fishburn. Still a very pretty bird, even though it's in its fall plumage. Additionally, uh, I decided to focus on finding the great blue heron. Um, and the Cornell Lab for Ornithology has this description. Whether poised at a river bend or cruising the coastline with slow, deep wing beats, the great blue heron is the majestic sight. The stately heron, with its subtle blue-gray plumage, often stands motionless as it scans for prey or wades belly deep with long, deliberate steps. They may move slowly, but great blue herons can strike like lightning to grab a fish or snap up a gopher. In flight, like for those, oh, in flight, look for the look for this widespread heron's tucked in neck and long legs trailing out behind. And I've never seen a great blue heron um, prey on a gopher before, but I have seen a picture even just recently of one eating a chipmunk, and I didn't realize that they ate anything other than fish, but I guess they will. You know, whatever is around, they will eat. All right, so now diving into the submissions, uh, Joanne and Terry Gorgeous uh, 
found 30 species on their, on their trip. So they birded on September 6th uh, from 9 a.m. to 11, 10 a.m. and the temperature was 70 degrees, which sounds like a beautiful morning. Um, they found 30 species and the notable species that I selected, they saw two gray blue herons, so they, they got one of the target species. They saw an osprey, a ruby-throated hummingbird, a belted kingfisher, a pileated woodpecker, a common yellow throat, so you know, a, a warbler, that's great, and a Baltimore Oriole. And then they, they then submitted these two pictures, one of the osprey and then the hummingbird on the left-hand side there. So thank you very much, Joanne and Terry. Marianne and John Henderson uh, found a total of 29 species. They birded on September 15th from 9 to 11.45, and Marianne has this to say. We enjoyed our visit to Lake Isaac this morning. The weather was good, and we saw lots of birds. Of course, it is fall, so the foliage and the confusing fall plumages made some birds hard to ID. We could not ID all the birds we saw, which is absolutely fine. Our star sighting was the rusty blackbirds. We were in the back where the trail is often muddy near the ramp when we were suddenly surrounded by a flock of birds. Initially, we thought they might be grackles, but their tails were too short and their beaks too small. Their behavior was different. They seemed to like the ground and kicking through leaves, mixing in with a few robins and the flicker that were already there. Then we got some good looks at the blackbirds. The rusty edging on their feathers was the essential ID clue. These were the prettiest blackbirds I have ever seen. The Nashville warbler was in the foliage near the boardwalk that runs along the north end of the pond. The bird was hard to spot. We could have missed him had another birder not pointed him out to us. We saw a second one in the woods where we often but did not today spot towhees. On the way back to the car, again along the north end of the pond, we spotted a handsome red-shouldered hawk who sat cooperatively so we could study and admire him. Very nice morning. So that's just, that's just a wonderful write-up. I am jealous that um, I didn't get to see any rusty blackbirds when I went. And then on the right-hand side, Nashville Warbler, um, taken by Tom Fishburn, which is one of the birds that they saw. And then here's their list and um, their picture of the red-shouldered hawk taken by Marianne Henderson. Um, Notable birds, they did see a great blue heron, so the target species. They saw a great egret and a green heron, the red-shouldered hawk, belted kingfisher, um, red-breasted nuthatch, the 15 rusty blackbirds, and two Nashville warblers. Oh, and that takes us to, to my visit. Um, I visited Lake Isaac on September 19th. Um, it, so I decided to visit Lake Isaac on September 19th and was fortunate to run into Tom Fishburne there who joined me on the Lake Isaac Loop Trail. I am new to photography and Tom encouraged me to experiment with my camera settings instead of using auto, um, which I found to be a very enjoyable experience and am continuing to experiment to learn more about my camera. Uh, birds seen that morning include a great blue heron, mallards, a gray catbird, northern cardinal, house sparrow, several northern flicker, and an American goldfinch. And we saw the several flicker together. Um, and so I just started to wonder when I was putting this presentation together what like a group of flickers is called. You know, the, the famous grouping of birds is a murder of crows. So I was like, I wonder what a group of flickers is. So I looked it up. And a group of flickers are collectively known as a guttering, a menorah, or a Peterson of flickers. So maybe that'll come up in conversation someday and you'll know, you'll know what to call them. You can pick either one. Um, and then on the right hand side there is the picture I took of um, a male yellow shafted northern flicker. And you can tell he's a male by the black um, mustache right there, right, on, right to the side of his beak. Females don't have that. Two additional pictures I took. Um, Great Blue Heron on the left and uh, Mallards uh, at the pond along the Lake Isaac Loop Trail. Now I, I caught this gray catbird and I, I thought the pictures turned out um, rather well in experimenting with the camera settings. Um, I had never been able to catch a wing that wasn't blurry before and it is a little blurry but you could still see 
the, the, the feather detail, so I was very excited about that. So thank you, Tom, for um, helping me experiment with my camera. And I actually got some, an, like an active shot that was worthwhile. Uh, picture of a northern cardinal um, and a female house sparrow. And then my last two pictures of goldfinch. All right, uh, that takes us to Alan Rand's submission. He tallied 38 species and participated in the field trip three times. Um, and there are many of you that went several times. We have a bunch of overachievers in this group. Um, so Al visited Lake Isaac on September 2nd and the 12th, and then Lake Abram on September 24th. So um, he saw that that were, that were notable, the great egret, green heron, Acadian flycatcher, and the great crested flycatcher. And then there's a beautiful picture that he took of um, sunset at Lake Isaac. And then um, he did get three warblers at Lake Isaac, the Magnolia, Nashville, and Common Yellow Throat. And then um, he went to Lake Abram on 924, and I included it because it is like if in the field trip, I had said you can you can stay at Lake Isaac, you can take the Lake Isaac Loop Trail, or you can take the Lake to Lake Trail. And Lake Abram is at the end, the other end of the Lake to Lake Trail. So he went there on a different date and got a uh, bay-breasted warbler, black pole warbler, and yellow rumped warbler. And another um, beautiful photo of the sunset at Lake Isaac by Al Rand. And then Sean, Sean, you're present today, and um, I know last time you wanted me to read it for you. Do you want me to do so again, or do you want to take this? Yeah, you can go ahead and read it again. Okay, just feel free to jump in if you have any additional comments that you want to say. All right, so um, Sean visited Lake Isaac four times, so that's amazing. Um, he says, I was able to make four trips to Lake Isaac and the Lake to Lake Trail. This location is practically in my backyard, and I have enjoyed this place for many years. However, this year was the first time I approached Lake Isaac as a photographer. For me, this added a new element to my experience here, and I loved it. My first trip was Monday, 9.14, at about 9 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. I started out at Lake Isaac and worked my way onto the path behind the lake. During my walk on the boardwalk, I noticed that there were not as many birds as I had seen throughout the other times of the year. As I started to progress deeper into the forest, I started to find more birds. Many of them were hiding deep in the woods and were not too excited about coming out for a picture. Thankfully, my zoom lens was able to see into the forest, and I was able to find a few. I captured one warbler, one downy woodpecker, and a robin that looked like it was definitely ready for winter. After finding these birds in close proximity to each other, I didn't find much, even by the creek. And the warbler he got was the American Red Start, as you can see the picture on the right-hand side. And it was a lifer, so congratulations, Sean. He had never got one before. And then here are his uh, downy woodpecker and American robin. Very lovely photos of those birds. And then this is a really exciting page. I loved it. All right. When I made it to the third turn in the path, I heard galloping. To my surprise, there was a horse coming. I spoke with the man on the horse, and he said that his family was following with their horses as well, five horses in total. I got to see the horses again as they were heading out of the path and back to the lake. It was at that moment that this day turned into something far beyond what I had set out for it to be. I was asked to take a picture of the five horses with riders all lined up. I was ecstatic. I was out there to capture birds, and now I was capturing five beautiful horses as well. Just when I thought it couldn't get any better, one of the riders dismounted his horse and asked me if I wanted to sit on the horse for a picture. This was one of the greatest moments of my life. I wanted to ride a horse for a very long time now, so just sitting on one for a picture was most of a dream come true. So congratulations, John. That's wonderful. So here's his um, 
picture of the horses and then Sean himself sitting on one of the horses. So my second trip was very early the next morning, 9.15, to capture the sunrise. I knew I wouldn't get the direct I knew I wouldn't get the direct sun based on elevation and tree coverage, but I was hoping to get some streaks of color across the sky. Unfortunately, due to the wildfires in California, there was a lot of haze in the sky and I captured nothing. As the sky started to get lighter, the geese flew in to spend their day at the lake. They were flying in the V formation and landed mostly as a group, with a few stragglers landing on their own. Song sparrows also started making their way out of the trees and a few came down to the rocks by the lake. I also saw an egret who started fishing this year in the first, this year is the first time I have seen an egret in Lake Isaac. Not sure if I just didn't pay attention years prior or if they finally found the little lake to make a home out of. So here are his two pictures of the Canada geese in formation and the great egret. All right. I continued on to both parts of the Lake Delay Trail that day. For a minute, I thought all I was going to see or hear were crickets. Uh, this trail was void of life except for the areas with water. I spotted a large turtle in the pond close to Eastland Road. I have seen many turtles there before, but none as big as this one. It was sunning itself in the reeds and didn't have a care in the world. There was one moment that made this day worth it, though. I was hanging out on the boardwalk by Lake I Lake Isaac trying to be patient for some birds to come out from the brush when a rather large bird flew into a tree to my right. When I looked over, it was a broad-winged hawk. It stayed on the branch for a little while before trying to pounce on something below. It was unsuccessful in capturing a meal, and I was unsuccessful in capturing that moment because somehow birds know when you briefly look away. And so here are his two pictures of the turtle and the broad-winged hawk. All right, my third trip was in the evening of 924, 6.30 to 8 p.m. This trip was mostly uneventful due to the time of day, but was a great way to relax after a stressful day at work. There were more catbirds out that night um, around the CSX tra tunnel in the first part of the lake to Lake Trail by Fowler's Road. Fowles Road, excuse me, I'm, I'm tripping over a lot of these words. It's not you, Sean, it's me. <laughs> um, I was able to capture one that was hiding in the tree. This shot turned out to be something different for me as it became a natural silhouette. Normally I do this in post-processing, but I didn't have to do anything to this one. Outside of these cappers, there was not much happening. And you could see the, the beautiful silhouette picture on the right-hand side of the screen there. Um, my last trip was on Sunday, 927. During this trip, I saw more of the same species from the previous trips and really didn't capture anything new. I did happen to spot a kingfisher in the distance, but was unable to zoom far enough for a good picture. Um, there were also three egrets flying around instead of only one from the previous trips. Lake Isaac is a location that I grew up with and it has always been a big part of my life. From the many walks I've shared with my grandparents there to now being a great location to photograph nature, I will always be back to admire the beauty and share it with the world. So thank you, Sean, for your wonderful submission, your write-up, and all the beautiful photos that you've shared with us. And now Nancy, who visited Lake Isaac 10 times. Nancy, you get the award <laughs> for visiting the most. Now, do you do you want to um, talk to your slides, or do you want me to read for you? Um, I'll, I'll go through them. Um, okay. Or I'll go and read the information. All right. Um, for I, all these wonderful. Oh, hold on. Yeah. So I I, I appreciate all these photographers taking photographs of birds. I can catch things that are standing still like the plants and the trees and stuff. So um, so anyhow, yeah, I, the reason I visited 10 times is because it's a 10 minute walk from my house. And, and it's, it's just a really wonderful place. And um, so I was able to, you know, visit the park several times and I pretty much stayed at Lake Isaac in the trail behind it, not the like, not part of the Lake to Lake Trail you know, going behind the hospital or all the way to, to uh, Lake Abram. Um, and uh, also, this, this 
was part of my warbler challenge. Uh, so I kind of did double duty um, in doing the, the virtual field trip and adding warblers uh, to my list from, from uh, my various times visiting. Um, but, you know, Michelle, you did a great job of reading uh, information that the Metro Parks put out about the um, Lake Isaac and the other lakes that are in the area. Um, so basically, like you said, it's a glacial pothole, um, as is the wetland behind Southwest Hospital, as is the uh, uh, Lake Abram at the north end of the Lake to Lake Trail. And of course, uh, with people moving in and agriculture and, you know, that area has really changed a lot. Um, it was, uh, you know, some, and of course people never really appreciated wetlands long ago. They thought they were mosquito breeders, which in some cases they are. But, you know, they want to fill them in or turn them into agricultural land, drain them, that t type of stuff. So, uh, again, the, these lakes have had a, a little bit of uh, uh, trouble in the past, but it's really fortunate that the Metro Parks has preserved them and made that nice corridor between, again, Lake uh, uh, Abram to the north and Lake Isaac to the south, and a really nice trail, uh, all-purpose trail for people to walk. Mm -hmm. um, I know when that trail was just being constructed, um, people were walking on it before it was really truly supposed to be open. <laughs> But uh, how did I know that? <laughs> how did I know that? Uh, yeah, because, you know, again, everyone was just itching to, to see that area. So it was very nice. Um, yeah, and the, the park right now is trying to remove uh, invasive species or non-native species. Um, so it changes all the time um, uh, if you go out there many, many times. Um, so. Oh, yeah, and this last line on this says um, uh, that the Metro Parks are not only have been removing uh, invasive species, but they're also manipulating the water level. This spring it was down a bit, uh, but the beaver keep plugging up the little dam area that the Metro Parks people try to keep open. So uh, I don't know who's going to win. So far the beaver are winning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Probably be the beaver. <laughs> What's that? It'll probably be the beaver. It's prob uh, yeah, yes, exactly. Uh, they, they'll probably be more persistent. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. And then uh, the photograph is the ironweed, the, the purple, and then the goldenrod in the back. That was earlier in September, and I just call that the royal colors of fall because that purple and gold, just beautiful. I love it. I love that photo. It's so beautiful, and it really captures the beauty of that trail behind the lake yep. for sure. Alright, so next next slide. Um, so and again, a, a lot of the, the things that I wrote about talks about the glacial uh, lakes and uh, my walks, I had 78 species all totaled um, and I'll have comments going on and I'll have the list as well too. Or Michelle will have the list on one of the slides. But the, again, more of the uh, photographs, the, the high bush cranberry on the left, which actually looks a little bit more like winter, or some kind of like a winter scene where the green and, and, and red. Highbush cranberry, not the best uh, wildlife food source uh, until it freezes and thaws and freezes and thaws. So I, I guess late winter, early spring is when the, the animals and birds will be like, oh, there's something there that I can eat. And then they'll eat it. Uh, goldenrod in the middle. There's lots of different species, species of goldenrods. And then on the right, uh, Tupelo, there's a number of Tupelo trees there. And if you visit now, they will be turning red and kind of a burgundy color. Um, but they also produce a black or blue-black fruit. And the robins and cedar waxwings just feed on those like crazy. Uh, so if you see a lot of robins or saw a lot of robins, Maybe Sean uh, uh, had that experience as well. They were probably feeding on those uh, tupelo or black gum uh, fruits, one of my favorite trees. All right, so we can go along. So uh, again, as, as you see, um, I started on September 1, went all the way to the end of September uh, in my 10 visits. and. Uh, 
the warbler species I highlighted or are hi highlighted there uh, started off with the Cape May and an oven bird, which I thought was really good. But of course, the very first warbler I saw was the Cape May, and it was a, the dullest bird in the world. I was looking at a towhee. This warbler flies into a little spruce tree. I mean. 12 feet away from me, and I'm like, uh, what are you? Um, I actually had to come home and make sure I was going to say the right thing. Uh, so it was, it was, uh, it was fun. Uh, this again, this made it a lot of fun. It's a challenge for finding all the birds and and uh, the warblers. Um, and a common yellow throat, and you'll see common yellow throat again and again and again on my list. So September 3rd, uh, other people had mentioned the osprey, I think the gorges, and uh, osprey floating over the lake. It looks, they look really awesome to see. They're beautiful. I didn't see it catch anything, but it would be, it would be really nice to have seen that. Um, Red-winged blackbirds, of course, you expect them to find in the area because of the wetlands. Uh, they seem to be gathering in groups. Didn't have the luck of having rusty blackbirds though, like like the uh, the Hendersons had. And the warblers, Tennessee, Nashville, and common yellow throat. Mm -hmm. um, on uh, September 5th, um, white-eyed vireo was a, a nice find, and uh, other, put it on eBird. A couple of other folks came out trying to find it. They are very skulky, and uh, so I got a, just a brief glimpse as it went from one vine area to another. Uh, but if you know the calls and know the songs, then you're able to, to do a little bit better in finding them. And the warblers then uh, that day were oven birds, Tennessee uh, warbler, common yellow throat, American red star, black burnian, and black pole. So you can see as September started to gear up with the warbler migration, even that first week. Pretty wood duck. Uh, September 9th, the wood duck numbers were uh, in pretty good uh, number uh, in one of the little back ponds. Other people have mentioned the great egret. I never did, never did have three. I've only had the one uh, each when I uh, saw it uh, at the lake. The white-eyed vireo made an appearance again, again only briefly, and warblers, mm, common yellow throat, red start, and Nashville. It was kind of a gray, foggy morning. I don't think the birds got up very early. Uh, September 11th, um, surprise, the double-crested cormorant and the egret were nice, and an osprey. So all of those birds use, utilizing the the, the Lake, the little lake there. Uh, grackles were beginning to gather for migration, and uh, then the warblers, the Nashville, Magnolia, Baybreast, Black Pole, and uh, guess what? Common <laughs> yellow throat. I was able to go back the next day as well. And you can see the numbers of species. Uh, I, I pretty much went in the morning all the time. And it varied quite a bit depending on, on the weather and how, how bright or dull the, you know, the sun was out and stuff like that. Um, the first Canada geese were sighted there about mid-September. Uh, I know the geese probably come in in the evenings after feeding in some of the areas nearby, but that was the first time I had run into Canada geese there. Um, Rose-breasted grosbeak was, was awesome. And then the warblers, uh, Nashville, Magnolia, and common yellow throat. <laughs> Beautiful egret there. Uh, September 15th, the wood ducks increasing a little bit in number. Uh, they were still kind of in their eclipse plumage, not completely, the males were not completely feathered out in their adult uh, breeding plumage, but still looking, looking really nice. Um, variety of warblers, the Nashville, Cape May, Magnolia, and Chestnut Sided, American Red Start, Perula, and Common Yellow Throat. <laughs> so you can see it's, it's, it's not a bad place uh, to, to see these, uh, to see warblers and a nice variety of species. So September 15th, 43 species. September 18th, just three days later, 34. Uh, wood ducks, 
Cooper's Hawk. That was awesome. It just, just zoomed right by on the trail. And then uh, a red-shouldered hawk was calling. Uh, did not see it, but it was calling continuously. Uh, and grackles and... Oh, the only warbler I had that day was a Tennessee. No common yellow throat. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't feel so bad. Thanks. Yeah, I went um, September 19th and didn't see any warblers. And you were there the day before and just saw one. So yeah, yeah. maybe they had gone or were hiding or something. It is, you know, it just kind of ebbs and flows. Yeah. Uh, September 23rd. The great blue heron, yay, one of our target species, and of course the egret and green heron. Um, did anybody else, I'm trying to think, did somebody else go out that day? Did Sean go out that day and have those three species? I thought somebody else had listed those as well, so that was pretty cool. Red-breasted nuthatch was, was a nice little find, and their, again, their eruptive movement coming down from the, the north in good numbers this year. Um, bluebirds, which was a nice little find, as well as Swainson's and wood thrush. And uh, that, oh, that was the day that Tom Fishburn uh, joined me and we walked the trail too. So that was that was good. Um, so our warblers uh, included Tennessee and Cape May, um, Magnolia, Baybreast, Black Pole, and my first yellow rumped warbler of the fall. All right, and common yellow trim. They're back. <laughs> so I don't know if that's the Cape May. Is that the Cape May that was uh, that, that we identified that same day, Tom? He had that listed as I think the on the twenty third. Okay. In yep. His photos. Yeah. So I, I assume that was the same one. Okay. Yep. And then my my last day was September thirtieth, and uh, yeah, a red shouldered hawk. Nice. Nice find, that was great. And the cormorants, uh, the warblers, yellow rumps um, were in good numbers. So you can see early on in the month we didn't have any yellow rumped warblers, but by the end of the month they were in really good numbers. Palm warblers, again, a late arriving warbler, black throated green, and magnolia. No common yellow throat. <laughs> <laughs> so, really, this was a, a wonderful. Um, choice for a virtual field trip and again just getting out and just seeing the change going on throughout that month. Beautiful. Yeah, Thank it you really is a beautiful location. Um, I'm, I'm happy I chose it too. I had gone one other time earlier in the summer and thought that oh this would make a really good bird walk location so I'm glad that I could fit it in and I'm really glad I chose the month of September because there were lots of warblers and it just was a, a really good month for people to enjoy. It has a lot of habitat. I think you would also mention that the Metro Parks had written that in. But yeah, there's fields, there's the wetlands, there's forested areas, there's brushy areas. Um, so, and this uh, it actually Lake Isaac is where uh, uh, myself and uh, another birder uh, does the spring bird walk mm. series. So, so that's Rich Rich Pasuk is the other birder that goes out with me. Um, and then before that was um, oh dear, senior moment. <laughs> uh, oh well, was another was a naturalist from the Metro Parks, uh, Don Altimus. There you go, and he led the trips, and so it's. Uh, you know, I've been walking there for, she's 30, you know, my husband's been 40 years now. Okay. But that was cause since I started when I was like one year old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and you're still not sick of the place after all those years. Oh, no, because I like, that's, again, it's my local patch. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Just, you know, and then you see surprises all the time. You're like, whoa, where did that corner come from? Whoa, there's an osprey. That type of stuff. So right. it's fun. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you very much, Nancy. And then here is part of your massive list. I could not fit it on one <laughs> slide. So 78 species, you get the award for the most identified. Um, the great blue heron, great egret, green heron, um, I highlighted as, as being great to see. I mean, all of them are, but you know, I like to pick a few just to highlight. Cooper's talk, uh, always a pleasure to see a cooper, so I'm glad you had that experience. The red-shouldered hawk, 
Uh, the pileated woodpecker, I always point out the pileated since that's our logo at Western Chicago Audubon. Um, the red-breasted nuthatch, uh, from what I understand, they, they kind of appear every other year or something like that. I think um, Bill Dininger was explaining that to me on it, in an earlier trip that you know it, it just depends on how um, the food source is going up in Canada, whether or not they come down or not. So uh, the swine, swineson's thrush and the wood thrush I also highlighted as being great to see. Um, and then on the second page here, I highlighted all of your warblers. Um, I, I won't go through them since you already did, but look at all those warblers. That's wonderful. And then a beautiful photo um, by Tom of a Tennessee warbler, which you did see um, on your trips. So thank you very much, Nancy, uh, for sharing your experience with us. You're welcome. And then finally, uh, we're at Tom Fishburn's page. Uh, Tom visited Lake Isaac four times, September 12th, 16th, 19th, and the 23rd. Um, and he says the magnolia warbler was the only one I saw on the morning of September 12th uh, and two gorgeous photos of that bird um, that we can enjoy. I'll pause here a moment so we can look. And what's really funny is Tom will give me access to his um, album for, for this field trip and he always tells me now be really picky with what you select and I think I use almost all his pictures because they were all so good. Um, very, very excellent photography skills Tom. Thank you for sharing them with us. Um, this pearl crescent rested a while and it's time for the monarchs to head south too. So, you know, these, these field trips, yes, we're Audubon, we're bird people, but I do love to see all of nature. You know, Sean shared the picture of the turtle and the horses. Um, so don't need to limit yourself to birds on these field trips. Definitely, if there's anything else about the natural area that you enjoy, please share it with us. Um, so gorgeous photos of um, the Pearl Crescent and the Monarch. I love how the Monarch's just kind of like hanging off of that flower. It's very pretty, very dainty looking. All right, on my second visit to Lake Isaac on September 16th, I saw this Tennessee warbler, and this Nashville warbler also perched nearby for several minutes. So there's the, the Tennessee on the left and the Nashville on the right. And this brown thrasher perched 20 yards in front of me at eye level for several minutes. And this high up eastern bluebird did not stay long before it was on its way. And a flock of house finches came through on September 16th, including this chubby looking puffed up male. Um, and I, I loved all these birds. I love how they, they all look so, they all look puffy to me. Um, and especially that, that bluebird has a little bit of fuzz on its left hand side. I just, I want to pet it. <laughs> <laughs> the birds will let you do that though. Um, so yeah, so the brown th thrasher on the left, the eastern bluebird in the middle, and then the house finch on the right. Lovely birds. And then a tufted titmouse, which I think is one of my favorite birds. I went, I don't know if I have a favorite, but I always enjoy seeing a tufted titmouse when I'm when I'm out birding. Um, so a tufted titmouse along the loop trail at Lake Isaac on September 19th, and a morning dove arrives and gets itself settled. So I, I love those two photos. And on the westernmost part of the loop trail, this bay-breasted warbler was busy foraging on September 23rd. A blackpool warbler finds a snack at Lake Isaac. So both these birds are eating. Um, and that's just, it's good to see that they are thriving and they're, they're beautiful birds and I, I, I love these photos. All right, and that, that brings me to the end of the digital scrapbook. Uh, a huge thank you to Joanne and Terry Gorgeous, Marianne and John Henderson, Al Ran, Sean Missig, Nancy Howell, and Tom Fishburne for your contributions, and a huge thank you to Cleveland Metro Parks for Lake Isaac for you know providing that space for the for public use and maintaining it. Um, the Lake Isaac Waterfall Sanctuary is located on Big Creek Parkway, just south of Fowles Road in Middleburg Heights, Ohio. Um, so anyone hasn't gone yet, um, please check it out. Uh, it's it's a beautiful, I imagine any every all year, it's a beautiful place to visit. Um, and then please visit wcaudubon.org for more virtual field trip opportunities. Um, 
on the home page, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a tile for each month. Um, so you can just check those out and see if there's a location you would like to visit um, and submit something to me to put into a scrapbook. And uh, you're more than welcome to attend these virtual gatherings, whether or not you were able to make it out to the location. So there's, there's no requirement to having to go there. But it is nice to get your experience to be able to share with others. And then uh, the photo of a brown thrasher at Like Isaac by Tom Fishburn on the left there. So thank you, everybody. So now we're um, at the end. Are there any questions or additional comments about anything you've seen in the presentation? I just want to thank everybody for all the beautiful photographs that, that were provided. I mean, wow. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's wonderful to have so much talent <laughs> participating in this field trip, uh, Tom and Sean and, and others um, providing their photos. It's nice to see what others see, too, when they go out. I want to say I am jealous that people got to see an osprey. <laughs> yeah, you had one of the last field trip in Nemesilla, right? Yes, I did. And ever since I finally saw them there, now almost everywhere I go, I see them. And to know that they're this close to my house, that's that's awesome. But You'll have to I go back and look for it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm going to have to. You'll have to wait until spring because they're pretty much heading south for the for the season. Hmm. No, I guess I yeah, didn't realize they were migratory. Right. That's interesting. Okay. Yep. Any additional comments? All right. Well. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, and I hope to see you all at the next virtual field trip next month. So uh, the, the virtual field trip this month is um, Cleveland um, Lakefront Nature Preserve. I, I plan on going soon. So um, if you haven't yet, please go and enjoy that place and um, see what you can see out there. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you, Michelle. Nice job, everybody.